Good afternoon. Uh, good morning to uh, another webinar on uh, building blocks for tax uh, by uh, Signet and, and TPA Global. Uh, I'm Steve Hebrex. Uh, uh, I will do a short introduction, after which I will hand over to Kay Val. Um, he is uh, one of the lead guys of, uh, of Signet. I explained to you uh, a, a tool they are using on end-to-end -end, uh, VAT. Um, solutions from uh, what I call the dirty data to digital mailbox but that tool can also be used to pick up data for uh, injection of data into other tools like TP Genie which Maria will uh, will uh, tell you all about and uh, we're presenting it in one go so you see one one tax workflow organized on an end-to-end -end base uh, through R7 and TP Genie being connected uh, to each other. Um, as you might see on your screen, there's also the handout, which is uh, the, the slides of today's event. Uh, in today's events, we will ask you to participate uh, through polls. Uh, we, we have, in this particular case, we have speakers like myself, we have the panel, the other speakers, who can chime in, but uh, through the polls, we also would like your participation uh, during this event. So if with that, we could have the, the topic of today is how to automate the tax data into your country by country reporting. Uh, if I could, uh, yeah, exactly have the first slide. Uh, this is a, a tax technology journey, which is on the TPA website, where we started a year ago uh, in, trans as we call it, transforming the world of tax. So we have user experience uh, days for tax professionals. We have playbooks. Uh, we have a whole host uh, on our website of uh, videos on tax data analytics. Um, the, the building blocks for tax is... Uh, one of the events you're you're listening to now already had some other sessions if this is the first time you chime in uh, and they're on our youtube channel uh in the in the next few weeks there will be a white paper on the future of tax in 2025 um, with a few visionaries on on tax uh, the tax arena how does that look like uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, paper to read and, and we've made a checklist based on our interaction with corporates. What is the challenges they are most faced with in dealing with uh, tax and technology and in, in general digital transformation of uh, in-house tax workflows. This is where we are. This is where we're going. If we move to the next slide. So as I, I, as I said, the, today's session will be uh, uh, First, starting with an R7 FAT tool, uh, although the word FAT might might be this misleading, <clears throat> the the tool will uh, pick up the the data from source tiers and and bring it to a cleansed version, all the way to be useful for feed into the CBCR, uh, but also into VAT, into uh, a generation of your intercompany transactional matrix. As, as we learned, um, the, these type of data points, like take, for example, the intercompany transactional matrix can easily be used uh, to also uh, being fed into a DAC6 uh, tool where each transaction needs to be assessed against the hallmarks. Uh, so we're also working on, on Lego blocks where on one side we have the R7 tool and the other side we have a DAC6 um, uh, Daxic software tool with a connector in the middle. Uh, the the other part will be, uh, as as I indicated, um, will be uh, represented by TP Genie, a, a one of the standard uh, transfer pricing software packages around the world, uh, where quite some large companies, including uh, TPA, are working with already for years and years, um, which has a full CBCR functionality, which um, includes outlier analysis, etc. But Maria will t tell you uh, about the details when when we get there. Um, if there's any questions, please uh, uh, use the chat box we you see on uh, on your screen, and um, throw 
that at, uh, at us so we can uh, immediately respond. Uh, the team here is, uh, will, will keep track on uh, any questions being raised. With that, I would like to uh, hand, uh, hand over the presentation and to KVAL. So KVAL, uh, take it away. Yes, thanks for the introduction, Steve, and thanks for setting the context. Uh, as Steve mentioned, R7 VAT, the tool that we've got, uh, uh, while VAT is the primary functionality, uh, there's a lot of peripheral functionality around financial data extraction, uh, processing, and uh, financial data reporting. And that's a use case we want to highlight here. So what we did to come up with the concept today, we looked at the CBCR reporting and the three tables that need to be filled out. And then we said, can we automate this process end to end or how much of this process can we automate end to end? And if we were to go on this automation journey, what systems do we need to interface with? That is essentially the background for the work that we have done and the work that we're uh, talking about today. Uh, in our 7 bad, what we have done is that to start off this entire journey of automation, we have built in data connectors that can extract data from all possible data sources. So whether it's internal data sources like uh, ERP systems and payrolls or external data sources such as a government tax portal or a company register, we can extract data from a number of these and that data stored in an adaptable data warehouse that can be suited to custom needs of each organization and that can contain all possible data fields that, that a finance or reporting function would need to utilize for any of the purposes. Right. So this approach will get a lot of benefits. Uh, there's a lot of efficiency because data is not extracted multiple times. Fewer data pipelines are built uh, and centralized data, of course, makes it easier for financial decision making as well. we'll go on to the next slide. Bit more detail on what we do in the R7 BAT process. So using robotic processes or API connections, we extract data from all different possible systems. The data is then remodeled and a lot of validation is done as per each local regulation to ensure that any data errors are corrected as close to the source as possible. There are also multi-source data reconciliations to check between different sources to ensure that data matches and to provide an additional layer of security. One example of this could be in, in the CBCR reporting when the income tax uh, amount paid has to be reported. The company's internal documentation from the ERP could be checked against the government tax portal to ensure that whatever value is being reported is correct and there's no reconciliation issues which could lead to tax audits or litigation in the future. And then of course it, it helps prepare certain tax returns or generate uh, data required that other tools can pick up on and prepare tax returns. And there's a lot of dashboards, analytics, and such that we provide uh, that can help for the compliance. We'll go on the next slide. So for a more practical example of how this could take place, we took all the data fields required in table one for country by country reporting, and we mapped out to where this data could be sourced for. So of course, standard fields like related party and unrelated party revenue could be sourced from ERPs. Uh, but you know even adding on there what we haven't mentioned in the table a lot of times it's difficult to identify related parties um, this is where company registers such as the uh, ministry of corporate affairs in india or companies house in the uk they end up being useful because uh, you know companies where uh, having common directors or common shareholders can be identified easily in a similar way a lot of companies won't have data on their headcount or number of employees within their erp but that would be available in the payroll. So payroll system that the company uses can be interfaced to get that data. In a similar way, the tax paid can be sourced either from an internal tax engine that the company uses to compute direct tax or also from the external tax authority portal uh, or even the case that, that was described earlier to use multiple sources to create a reconciliation. In this sort of way, we managed to map out for table one and table two where a lot of the data could be sourced for. Now, once these sources are identified using the pipelines that we have built in R7 VAT, we can automate periodic extraction for the data, which, which reduces time spent on uh, data extraction. The data processing is automated and data availability is made easy and centralized so that whenever country by country reporting is carried out, the data is available at a centralized location that tools like TPGini can pick up on 
uh, and used for their processing. In this way, almost all of the manual effort involved uh, gets taken out uh, because that's something that, that, that would consume a lot of time. We'll go on the next slide. So we wanted to pause here based on the data that we have shared so far and run a poll on you know how many IT systems are used to source data for CBCR reporting. And I just want all the attendees to think about uh, what we said previously that ERPs, even multiple ERPs in case of group companies, uh, payroll systems, internal and external tax systems, all of these could be used. We just wanted to get an idea to see how many IT systems are used right now uh, for existing processes for all of the attendees. So please feel free to vote. I guess once we have sufficient responses, Maria, we can uh, we can proceed onward to see the to see the results. This is uh, you know on the lines of what we were expecting as well. Is that most companies would use at least you know their ERP as a minimum, which I which I believe would account for the one to three systems. But it's really good to see that you know, there are certain attendees who are also using, uh, you know, using a larger number of systems, you know, even especially in the four to six and seven plus category. And uh, maybe when we open it up for question and answer or discussion going ahead, it'll be great to hear about what these systems are uh, that are being used to give maybe other attendees also an idea on what sort of possibilities are there. But this is very encouraging to see. We'll, we'll go on to the next part. The second question was of the three tables that are there, how many are pre-filled using internal and external data sources versus how many would be on the other side, you know, filled out manually using either Excel calculations or something on those sort. And we're a lot more concerned with the data sourcing part here uh, than the final report production, because I believe a lot of, a lot of the attendees would be using transfer pricing tools to generate the final report. But we just wanted to see that how much of the data that goes into uh, the tables is automated. So we can. So I think from from my side, we were expecting more uh, to see on the table one side, but it's great to know that table two is also pre-filled by uh, or, 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 or I would say more than one table is uh, pre-filled using data sources. I think that's really encouraging to see that uh, the kind of automation that we are proposing, uh, you know, a lot of it has been, uh, has already been looked at. So that's that's definitely encouraging. We'll, we'll go on to the next slide. So now we'll give you uh, some some dummy data using some dummy data, we'll try to show you what the data source looks like uh, within the R7 tools. So of course, the data sourcing and the connection we've done beforehand. But we just want to show you a sample of how we have the data available in the UI. Uh, yeah. So I'll just show my screen. I hope it's visible. If uh, Maria or someone from the team could confirm that. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. So on this screen here, we've got data for table one that we've sourced. So all of this, you know, as we mentioned earlier, uh, comes in from either the ERP or the payroll system. Those are the two we have connected here uh, to, to source the data that's coming in. And using either APIs or automation in case of the payroll system, we were able to get all the data coming in for each tax jurisdiction and then classify it into uh, each of the headings that are required uh, for all the jurisdictions. In a similar way, uh, for table two as well, we've got a, a legal entity wise division uh, where we have things like the nature of business activity mapped out as well, sourced directly from again company registers, uh, which can then of course be used to fill out the table going ahead. In a similar way uh, for the other company as well, details such as places of business and such. Of course, certain times there are data availability issues, but for the most part, we have at least the nature of business activity and the jurisdictions mapped out over here. So uh, yeah, on, onwards to the next slide. Um, uh, 
Uh, okay, Val, um, uh, before we move on to the next uh, poll, um, how difficult it is to extract all this data? I know uh, different companies run sometimes on multiple ERP packages. Uh, how easy it is to, uh, to, to extract this with the tools you've been using with, uh, with other clients? And, Certainly, on on your full exercise you're doing for VAT already, I guess this is not very complex. Well, I think it's become uh, we have reached a point where it's become very straightforward now. Uh, so, so just uh, for the for the participants' context as well, for GST data, uh, we we managed to source it from over forty different ERP systems now. And when we were doing this exercise for uh, the discussion today for transfer pricing data, all we had to change was the data fields we were extracting. Uh, but there was no other change to the method of extraction or scripts that we had to put in. What that means practically is that there are ready-made data extractors available uh, for majority of the systems. Of course, unless there are custom systems implemented, in which case certain complexity could come in, but that can be dealt with in a, in a relatively easier way because most companies IT teams would have knowledge about that and we can work with them to, uh, to, to get data in those cases as well. Um, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to the table two part, in certain cases, of course, the country's uh, company registers aren't very accessible. So that's, you know, sometimes geographic challenges can come in, but that also we're looking at automating more and more by the day. Thanks, Keval. Let's uh, move to the poll. Yeah, this process is, is quite uh, common, not only for CBCR, but also for VAT, for corporate income tax, uh, for uh, soft default forms, uh, for various uh, pre-clearances of invoices. So this process, uh, although still applied, very siloed on one form um, uh, with one piece of uh, software. Okay, Val, Maria, are you surprised seeing the result here? Yeah, I'm definitely uh, surprised to see that uh, there's a much higher proportion of in-house IT solutions being used. Uh, I think what, what it might feel is that I think in a lot of cases, effort is being duplicated where a lot of off-the-shelf solutions would be just as good that could be used in the same case but where a lot of the attendees might have put in um, some amount of it budget to develop this in-house i think that may be a process that's inefficient but again depends on each individual condition so i'm definitely surprised to see this yeah i would say i'm also surprised because i do know that the uh, development of the xml conversion tool is quite a pricey exercise and not very straightforward for internal it teams so yeah, but good, good for companies. I hope they can can maintain it as well because developing is one thing, but maintaining it year to year that yeah that that also can be tricky. Uh, so thank you for participating in the poll, and I will now take over and uh, talk about TPGini. And the reason we ask uh, the question uh, for the poll is that because. This solution is one of those of the shell solution that can uh, convert uh, CYCR to XML. It also does, of course, other things like master file, local file, country by country. Uh, and I will now switch to a demo uh, where I show you the C by C, how it looks uh, in the TPGini system. So the data that Kival was just explaining that it's gathered through ERP and other uh, systems uh, can be, uh, yeah, can be converted uh, in this tool. And the connection uh, with uh, R7 tool would be an uh, API connection, so application uh, connection. But of course, uh, another uh, step that could be done is just downloading uh, an Excel file uh, from one system and uploading it here. That, that's a bit, yeah, one extra step, but that, that can be done. And TPG is pretty straightforwardly populated in terms of uh, tables one, two, and three. 
And once the data is gathered and uploaded here, uh, you can see line by line. So of course, it, uh, for the purposes of table one, it aggregates the data, uh, but you can also see it still by entity if you need to check anything. Uh, you can also review here your table two and uh, change it, of course, if necessary, if anything still went wrong during the data collection. And uh, for all the fields in the country by country, you can add comments, uh, which then would go directly to your table three, uh, if that was not done before. And uh, once that is done, uh, you can also review your ratios. So these are the ratios uh, prescribed by OECD, uh, but also some other ones you can add if you want. And you can review and compare uh, between the activities, between the entities. You can also compare to your previous financial years to the extent they are in the system. You can uh, see, for example, this is income tax paid, and you can see the uh, statutory rates and see the income tax paid by the group. And uh, run your comparison. Maybe you would want to add more comments to table three based on this analysis. Uh, and what also this system does, and why I made my comment on the XML file. So this system uh, checks against the XML template and it checks whether you miss some information. So, for example, if you miss, in this case, tax identification number or a country code, uh, and it uh, suggests to you that you need to change it in order to, for XML file to be a correct one. So uh, this kind of checks, uh, I'm not sure they could be pre-built within the in-house solution, but definitely off-shelf solutions do have uh, this kind of automated checks and can uh, suggest you quite easily uh, what, uh, what to do in order to, for your XML file to be correct and in order for the tax authority to accept it. And once you are done with, uh, did dealing with these issues once you are done with analyzing ratios and adding enough comments to uh, table one, two, and three. You can download the file, and it's that easy that, uh, well, in this case, we had already a file, but I just delete it. So you can just click a button, generate XML, and you get your XML file, uh, which can be done files with the tax authorities, but of course, you can also still download an Excel. Uh, if you need it for any purpose uh, for your internal reporting, for example. And I think uh, we can move to the next poll. So what we see corporates doing is uh, one-year analysis, as uh, Maria just showed. But uh, these days, as we know, uh, we, we've been talking also to software companies who help uh, the tax authorities on the back end of the digital mailbox uh, you as a corporate uh, file your CBCR with. And, and uh, we've also looked at their uh, outlier analysis uh, automated fully automated and fit for purpose so the other question is do you do one year of outliers do you do a cycle of three years or even longer uh, we, we now see the first questions uh, coming from tax authorities on typically three years and an analysis uh, so Maria, any any thoughts on the on the responses? Uh, somehow I cannot see them. Can you please tell me what they are? Um, um, through external IT solutions, uh, twenty two percent. Uh, through mm -hmm. in house IT solutions, uh, zero. So no no internal IT solution through mm -hmm. Excel file. Okay. Uh, uh, by far the, the biggest, uh, 56, uh, 56 yeah. percent. Yeah, that, that is that was expected. And I do yeah. not perform this analysis. So almost one out of five. Wow, that's that's a lot. 
Well, to those who selected the last answer, I would definitely recommend you do this analysis because, yeah, if you don't, first of all, it helps with the simple thing uh, such as uh, typos or some incorrect data, because if you see an outlier, you can immediately start digging and understanding what it is. Uh, but also, if you do have some obvious outliers, like a very high profit per FTE or a very low tax paid in the jurisdiction where you uh, could be potentially challenged, then you can start maybe preparing yourself for that already because you know that this result will be shared with the tax authorities. So definitely, we always say please do ratio analysis before you file your CBC. Even if you can't change anything, if the data is correct, you can still just prepare yourself. Uh, but yeah, doing it for Excel file, I kind of expected that answer uh, because I understand that most of the off-shelf tools, tools just convert it to XML and they don't do anything more, so no analysis, uh, unlike the tool that I sh just showed. So um, yeah, Excel, well, sec second best option uh, because it's typically just simple ratios. But uh, yeah, if you could have it in a tool, uh, it is easier to run as six said, three year analysis or also analyze uh, for certain activities. So definitely, yeah. Those who use the uh, external IT solution are uh, on, in a better position. Uh, if you have any more comments on this poll? Um. Maybe pause a, 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 a second uh, if any one of the audience wants to share with uh, chat uh, their questions. Uh, please uh, go ahead and do so. Um, if not, shall we move to the next slide? Yeah. Um, yeah. And we just have some key takeaways here. Uh, yeah, the first two are from uh, from Kival, and as he was saying that uh, indeed CBC can be significantly automated uh, in order not to repeat this exercise because it's pretty straightforward. And also that the data can be collected from your existing sources, so you don't need to do a double work for preparing CBC, but rather just reuse uh, something through the connectors, as the one we showed, for example, today. And the question for you to take with you and to think how do you ensure the quality of the data? And another one is, especially for those who are using in-house solution, how do you ensure compliance uh, with the country or with the local XML format? Very good. Um, yeah, this is... Uh... So if the key takeaway, we, we learn more and more, and we, we uh, obviously uh, call it building blocks or Lego for tax uh, solutions, where we uh, try to uh, visualize in-house workflows for, for tax as, as about 100 workflows uh, in-house people are dealing with, uh, probably a little bit more if you specify them in detail, but say you have 100 workflows which pick up data from uh, source tier, a need to clean them, convert them, select them, as, as uh, what R7 and TPG have shown you today, to move the right package in the right format through the digital mailbox with the tax authorities. What we are doing through this webinar series is uh, alerting people on the various, uh, the, the various extensive use cases now where the, the source tier data is being picked up and through if not one software, then multiple softwares is migrated all the way to uh, to an XML filing with uh, with tax authorities. We we do believe that that the the market is ready for more co commoditized uh, uh, solutions uh, and commoditized going beyond just an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, just to cl uh, clarify myself, so this uh, this um, end to end. Uh, solutions which require sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes two with a connector on top of that type of softwares. 
is is what we are currently uh, visualizing through this webinar series and we do see uh, different applications as well so if KVAL comes up with the intercompany uh, the intercompany transactional matrix uh, we do see and we're t we're having talks now with uh, DAC6 uh, software providers who say okay but if you have that batch of information already can you feed it through a connector into my DAC6 uh, software because that eliminates another human step with the uh, possibility of human uh, errors uh, trying to to read those out so the the more holistic your data architecture is as uh, as Kate Val showed huh? he didn't only pick up country by country reporting but he also picked up data sets for VAT returns as well as uh, in the company transactional matrix data. Uh, the more uh, concise your, your approach to data becomes. And at the end of the day, um, you, you need to be aware that what you send to the tax authorities in, in an XML file only on, in, in, in fine print on the site carries, uh, whether it's VAT, uh, CBCR, or, or transfer pricing related filings. Um, the, the tax authorities at the back end of this digital mailbox will uh, certainly look at, uh, at the data sets uh, more as data than uh, as forms and will apply the uh, financial analysis on it um, and outlier analysis as uh, Maria showed. Um, we we got two questions uh, from the audience. Uh, Jorge uh, uh, asks a question: What's your experience in terms of what tax authorities use as a reference data to compare against the taxpayers' data? Um, Maria, you wanna you wanna comment on the, on that question? So. Yeah, so as we, we understand on our experience, uh, the countries do collect this data in terms of, well, as, as, at least I know for sure China does it, uh, in order to build uh, benchmarks in a way for industry. Uh, and I have not yet uh, heard of the actual case uh, that where this data was used, but I understand they are building this, this, this data blocks in order to a certain point come up and say okay for manufacturing of this product we think this is the normalized return and we want this return and we, we we do not accept losses anymore so i guess other countries if they're smart enough would probably do the same because that that's indeed almost in a way uh, yeah free benchmarking data for the group uh, but uh yeah other way that they potentially can use it in a very simple way is where they would see uh, no FTEs and very high uh, profit because that's one of the most obvious. So those, yeah, the countries could pick up uh, right away on, on uh, transactions with the countries with no people and, and high profits. Did they want to add anything here? Yeah, the, 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 the notion of uh, tax authorities uh, using uh, three years of data already uh, is, is on, the, on the map uh, very actively. I think you see it in the way the questions come through, but also the way OECD is now talking uh, with, with uh, not only OECD members, but also inclusive members about sectorial uh, data sets and sectorial margins for certain activities. Um, if, if you recall, uh, the whole uh, pillar one discussion is one of the factors. Factor B is a standardized compensation for a sales and marketing function. Uh, that, that type of uh, data from the pillar one analysis uh, to a large extent comes from uh, CBCR. So if you look in pillar one, uh, Table 6.1 and 6.2 are uh, the loaded gun they are using in the sense that uh, that that those two tables in the pillar one um, uh, outlined by OECD uh, have been using a th a, a, around 1,000 uh, B2C tag giants uh, CBCR data from 2016. Uh, that gives you a little bit the feeling of the power of using those data sets and come to certain uh, analysis and conclusions. 
uh, the same will happen for sure with sectorial margins like the factor B uh, in the in the pillar one discussion. So it, in, in that sense, the CBCR is feeding directly into the uh, impact assessment of uh, pillar one, but certainly also in the impact analysis and tax position uh, of an individual taxpayer. We're, we're pretty sure that's uh, what we see happening right now. Very good. Um, that was one question. Another question came through, through from Gert Jan, and he asked and probably gave out that's a question for you is the data structure, um, the, the data structure of the solution, of the R7 solution uh, based on uh, OECD XBRL GL structure? Or well, is, is the question from Gert Jan? No, so we have uh, we have our own data structure to store the data, um, and we have kept it flexible using big data in a way that we can accommodate all possible data sources that come in. Uh, but we haven't kept it uh, specific to the OECD XBRL structure. We have our own internal structure that we built in that allows all kind of reporting to be uh, created based on based on the data that we store. We can provide data outputs in any format that is required. Uh, using custom APIs that we provide or custom reports, uh, but our storage is based on our own. Yeah, and that that connectivity uh, obviously creates a lot of flexibility. Uh, what what uh, our seven tool signet has already proven in uh, various uh, various cases and implementations. Um, so I think that's. Um, leading to more flexibility as long as it does translate as I think uh, Ted Jan said point is to OECD XBRL uh, GL structure type of uh, uh, configurations uh, to make sure we're fully compliant. Okay um, with that is there any final points gave out from your side uh, or from your side Maria? Mm, not from my side. Nothing is to add in for my side. Very well. I'm looking at more questions, but I don't see more questions coming through. So with that, we close our webinar of today. And thank you very much for your participation. Um, next, uh, in two weeks time, the program, uh, as uh, insofar I'm well informed, is about how do you extract data from various uh, source tier. Uh, and, and then start injecting the relevant set of data into local countries where typically people use um, localized corporate income tax software uh, to get that full automation and to end uh, organized. How do you actually do that uh, with the full support of uh, what we call a, uh, a process and communication tool like Office 365? So that will be uh, on our um, on our agenda in two weeks from now. So please register uh, uh, for that event. And uh, thanks again for uh, for uh, participating in this event. And wishing you uh, a great day. Thank you.